Scott Brown, your senator-elect from Massachusetts, talked to a fellow Massachusetts native last night, Jay Leno, talking about uh, what he's looking forward to when he gets down here in Washington. Take a listen. <laughs> When was the last time he talked to the president, and could you beat him one-on-one -on -one in basketball? The only time I spoke to him was election night, and I did challenge him to, uh, you know, pick his best, and I'll take my daughter, Ayla, who plays for Boston College, and we challenged him a little two-on-two. -two. I, I think we'd have the upper hand. Really? Him. Really? Yeah. All right. You, you heard it. There we have a challenge from the senator-elect uh, right I, away. I could be a little cynical here. The president has not played basketball with women, so maybe he doesn't want to play the senator's daughter. I heard she's pretty tough. She's very tall. She let's, could be a challenge for him. Let's start it off. I think <laughs> Reggie Love wouldn't be available for this, uh, <laughs> we're, we're assuming. And, of course, Sunday, he'll be sitting down with, uh, with Barbara Walters. Much must-see TV. We're joined now by our co-host here at Top Line, David Challion, political director here at ABC News, who we swear is in Hawaii, <laughs> although it looks like he may be at the courtyard by Marriott down the street here in Washington. Uh, and, and he's there for the RNC's winter meeting. And, and David, uh, g give us the rundown. What's the, what's the mood of Republicans in this uh, tropical paradise that we promise you're at? Hi, guys. Uh, and Karen, first of all, we should tell everyone he did play basketball with uh, Sasha and Malia last night. Ah, ah point. well, one, if one of the daughters <laughs> plays, that should be good. <laughs> um, uh, listen, the Re 168 Republican National Committee members gathering for their annual meeting, as you guys know, uh, their winter meeting at the beginning of the uh, midterm election year is sort of what sets uh, the path forward for sort of giving the Republican Party apparatus their marching orders for the midterm elections. And they have so much wind at their backs, guys. I mean, this is a party that is just so jubilant with the current uh, political environment. Uh, they can barely contain the glee. And the <laughs> problem is they still have a lot of division within their own party. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and what, what about Michael Steele in particular? What's he had to say? Well, Liz, I, I was in a, you know, I was flying for what felt like 18 years yesterday to, to get here. <laughs> uh, so I, I missed uh, his press conference that gets written up in, the, in some of the papers today as being very testy. Um, but Michael Steele is, sort of has that un, you know, terrible job of hurting cats right now, uh, trying to keep this whole thing together. But that guy is incapable of not making news, apparently. <laughs> and so it, it seems that there was a testy exchange. I was not at the press conference yesterday. I'll be sitting down with uh, Chairman Steele a little later today. I, I hope he won't be as uh, combative. David, talk a little bit about what the discussion is like out there, the buzz about the grassroots level and the incorporation of the Tea Party activists, who obviously have been so vocal, so public over the last couple of months. How are they going to try and incorporate that into any sort of electoral strategy? Right. A couple of things. You have this one sort of conservative caucus, they call themselves here at the RNC. Uh, you may remember several months ago there was a proposal maybe to have a purity test. Uh, where the RNC chairman Steele would not be able to endorse and fund candidates unless they agreed to eight out of ten party principles. Uh, that ended up not getting formally introduced. But this conservative caucus, which believes they're representing sort of the Tea Party movement inside the RNC party structure, Karen, uh, they, they have an alternative proposal that is going to require the RNC to take into consideration and determine that each one of their candidates is committed to the Republican Party platform. You know, my question to that is, you know, the Republican Party platform calls for a constitutional amendment to overturn Roe v. Wade, <laughs> calls for a constitutional amendment to ban gay marriage. I'm not sure Scott Brown would be able to get that kind of determination. Oh, I think that's, I think that's almost yeah. certainly uh, right, David. Are, are you picking up on the same kind of optimism that we hear from, from Republicans in, in Washington? They're meeting, obviously, the caucus is meeting down the road or up the road in Baltimore today, and a lot of them are confident, hey, we can win back the House. Is that bubbling over into this meeting, or are they now grinding through the minutia right now of, of, uh, of platforms and uh, these different initiatives that are out there? Well, so much of what makes up the RNC are the state party chairs. I mean, these are the people that are really into the fundamentals, the blocking and tackling of registering voters, uh, you know, turning on their victory operations, Rick. There is a ton of optimism about the environment. They do think uh, that they are right here at the precipice of something big. Uh, they all realize Election Day is nine months away. Right. And they, they still need uh, quite a bit of fundraising to, to match up with the Democrats who hold all the powerful strings. And, and David, before we let you go, can you prove that you're in Hawaii? I mean, do you have anything or any... No, the sun is now up, Rick. I, I don't know that I can prove... Uh... <laughs> I mean, we need like a, we need, feel like we need a sign of life, you know, something here that just that suggests that you're actually there as we work on that shot. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. the bookshelves in the room. This is yeah. This is <laughs> this looks scary, David. I'm you know, glad I'm not. 
Please, please tell us you're wearing people a Hawaiian think, people board say you're having, People say you're having uh, fun in the sun. We're getting a choppy picture, though, with, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, the, the generic hotel background. David Challey and our co-host here at Top Line, we uh, wish you uh, a good time there and uh, in enjoying, enjoying <laughs> Hawaii as much as you can because I know you're working hard for us. Thanks, David. Mm -hmm. And be, sh be sure to watch on Sunday. It is absolutely must-watch TV. Barbara Walters will be up in Massachusetts with Scott Brown, the senator-elect from Massachusetts, talking out his first big Sunday morning interview in ABC News exclusive on this week. This is going to be a great one. It's get as your, good as they come. Get your bagels early. Sit down and get ready to watch that on Sunday And legitimately morning. don't know a lot about this guy. That's all the time we have for this edition of Top Line. Watch us again and keep us in uh, tuning in at twitter.com slash the note. Keep the conversation going. I, yeah, I